absolutely amazing. morning and uh, yesterday was senior race day friday and we didn't actually see any racing so today is saturday which is also senior race day really confusing this year because senior race day is on saturday instead of the senior race day bank holiday so yeah get your head around that um with me and toby my youngest have come for a walk up into a higher plantation although there's not many trees here um, so this has been recently felled up the last couple of years um, there was a lot of larch and abies in here and it has been replanted. We've just been having a look and some of these are silver birch. There's a bit of all sorts going in there but that whole hillside has been replanted. So looking out over the north, there we go, that's a fantastic view of the north of the island. We might get a better view from a bit further up but that big field there, the straight runs just along the front of that field. Um, with the school off over this way and obviously down through the village that way and uh, that's the quarry of Kronk sumac you know so when we've been up on Kronk sumac where we we're throwing the eggs off that's the top of that hill we're looking at from the other way now and um, so yeah lots to see lovely view in the north of the island from up here you can see all the way out to jerby church and out to jerby so the old guard house is uh, i'm going to struggle to point this probably about there somewhere is where the old guard house is where we tell the veggies um yeah. Right, I'll see if we get any further up and see what it looks like. Still sat there and finally the bikes are going. So senior race is going, it's underway. And uh, yeah, the easiest way to get around is on the old push bikes. So just heading down, just gonna see if we can watch some. They're only doing four laps instead of the six. So we'll see how we get on. So this is down on the Solby Strait. This is just at the school um, where we built the bench. And here, just after here, they're doing close to 200 mile an hour uh, as they go down this strait. Uh, so this runs all the way down to Solby Bridge. So you can just see the mass of orange stood there at the Orange Army. There are all the marshals at the Solby Glen pub. And uh, here comes another bike through. Absolutely shifting, insane speeds down here. So, yeah, one of the fastest parts of the circuit. I think the only faster bit is coming down after the Craig Nabar downhill. Uh, but there's a, an official speed trap on here. There isn't up there. So, yeah. Then you have to wait for the next bike. So I think they're in on lap two. I think now they've done. So they've got two more laps to go, and they've just done a pit stop. So. As they get that close on the road, yeah. Oh, 
I know that I said that this week was not going to have much about actual farming in, but I thought you'd want to see this. Sorry about the big bang. Um, so obviously weekend, TT, done, finished. This week, gonna be going and getting some uh, of the elderflowers and I'll be showing you how I make elderflower cordial off a BBC good food recipe. So I've just got a couple more ingredients to get and then I'll get some flowers picked. We'll do that. But today I'm heading out just to cultivate up where I've been moving that soil. We've made a new bit of a track and the stuff that the, the soil we've been moving onto the track just needs leveling out. So I'm taking one of the cultivators out there, which is just a, like a an overgrown spring tine cultivator. It's not the little twiddly ones, it's a big tine. And I've just had to replace a couple of the tips on it. So this is a tine tip so this is a brand new and this is one of the big ones with the wings so it runs on about that angle you can see how that would actually lift and tear up the ground two bolts into it and that goes on so there was a couple which were broken so I'm placing with them but what i wanted to show you was obviously in the the lovely building here it's all the bits that you need so these are uh, just stab my knee on a so that is a, a wheel mark eradicator and i've just stabbed my knee on it um what am I saying? These are all wear parts. So, you know, I was saying about the wear parts on the uh, subsoiler. That's what this shelf is. These are plow bits. Um, there's discs there off the big disc cultivator. So these are all the bits you need because if you're midway through doing something and it breaks, you've got to be able to change it. So it can't just be um, you ring up, you get a part. These have all come in from the UK or probably from in from actually in Europe as well. And there's some big chunks of steel. So this is one of the tips off the subsoiler. Check that out, you know. And these almost totally wear away. It is, it is hollow, um, but they almost totally go. So, you know, that's what's actually ripping up the ground. And that is one of the wings which sits on it, you know, that we're on either side of the tip, which lifts it. So there's some absolute whopping bits of steel here, but that is the kind of like the 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 bit of, of all this farming. You need to have so many parts. And like I said, wheel mark eradicators. So they dig in behind the wheels, rip up behind it, and get rid of your wheel mark before the drill or whatever you put in there. So I don't quite know what they're off, um, but they're off probably one of the drills. So I'm gonna go do this cultivating. And the next time you see me, I should be doing some elderflower harvesting and we'll see you there. Hello, and I've once again forgot to bring the proper camera down, so I'm doing it on the phone. And I'm off to pick uh, flower heads. Oh, there's a crow that can't fly there. Must be a fledgling. We'll leave that. He's safe here, absolutely safe, unless any cats come around. So, I'm planning to make around about four and a half litres of uh, elderflower cordial. That's the plan. That's what oranges and lemons I've bought four. So this is an elderflower and I need 90 of them. So 90 of them into the bag uh, and then the rest gets done at home. So I'm going to see what I can pick now. I've got to be down at the school in about 10 minutes. So I might struggle to get 90, but if I can get 30, I could do one batch and then we could go from there. So I can't even show you me picking them because I can't, I've, I've got the tripod, but that's in the pickup over there. All great, forgetting everything now. See you in a bit. There we go, we have 30, well, 31, because I did one for good measure. Um, elderflower, mm, yeah, hang on. There we go, elderflower heads picked. And so I'm just gonna do one batch and see how it goes. So on the island, the elderflower, uh, or the tramon tree, uh, is uh, where the fairies live. So before you do anything with a um, elderflower, the, the, uh, good thing to do is give the fairies notice so two days since i came down uh when i was passing here with the roller and uh, let them know that i was going to be picking some of their flowers as you can see i have not picked many of the flowers you know there's still a lot more on there because not only do the birds need them and the bees i also want some elderberries and you don't get the berries without the flowers um so yeah, it might sound all a little bit funny about caring about fairies, but the island is very superstitious and I'm not messing with them. They're uh, responsible for all sorts of car crashes. Um, there is a bridge on the island called Fairy Bridge where you have to say hello, little people, uh, which is more of my Muchy Vega. 
uh, that's good morning. Uh, Vestamai or Evi is good afternoon or good evening. Um, like I say, I'm not messing with it. I don't want any bad luck. I don't want any car crashes. If anything, I want some very good luck for everything going on here. Now, speaking of good luck and things which are going well, one of my friends who I went to primary school with, uh, that's, that's a long time since. I have known him, I think, since reception. And uh, I left from West Yorkshire, where I grew up, Dewsbury. Uh, I left there in 2002 and went off to university. And to be honest, I've not been back since because my parents did move away from there. So other than the powers of Facebook, where we kind of reconnected on, I have not known him since. But got a message from him the other day saying how great the uh, videos are. So that is absolutely amazing. So I just wanted to give a big shout out to Paul Dolby and uh, his family. You know, it's uh, amazing how things kind of change and, and move on and what people end up doing. And back then I'd have never thought I'd have been doing anything like this, let alone that. I'm sure Paul will tell anyone who knows him. I was all about kayaking. Kayaking was it. And uh, I was pretty sure that was all I was going to be doing as a job. So, I'm now going to be doing a video of making elderflower cordial. So, let's see how that gets on. Must get down to school, otherwise I'll be in trouble with a young'un. See you in a bit. Right then, so, we're in the kitchen, and now it's time to give the elderflowers, which you've just seen, a little bit of a wash off. Because, the um, not only are the elderflowers at the home of little fairies on the Isle of Man, do smell fantastic they're the home of plenty of other little bugs and grubs and midges and all sorts of stuff so the bag was all oh, had all sorts in so really gentle wash off in the um in the sink there so we're just going to give them a slosh around in there and run a bit of cool water and then put them into a colander <coughs> so they can drain off um i haven't got the sugar yet but i have got the lemons and the oranges um so they're just from the supermarket um obviously if you're somewhere which grows them amazing better uh, it does say on the recipe which is just the bbc good food recipe so if you want to check it out have a look on there it does say unwaxed um i've done my best to get them they were loose ones um so i've picked the best ones out of it so they're going to need to be um sliced um to go in not all of them into one lot so there is three lots that i'm going to do if i get that far so this is one lot's worth of flowers i need to get the sugar so i'm going to get that tonight because i've got to drop the lad in um to town for something so i'll get the sugar then and the other thing you need is citric acid which we've still got from when we did it last year um so this you can get from a chemist or we bought that from amazon because none of the chemists on the isle of man had any um which seemed to be probably because it was time to make jam and elderflower cordial and such like so that all kind of ran out um yeah and whilst i'm here check these out so this bunch of flowers this is some of my sweet williams off the field and that was a week old on Sunday. So that's now what's an eight, nine days old and he's still looking absolutely amazing. You know, they're, they're phenomenal. Are these flowers I really like the, the dark colored ones. <coughs> they're nearly all open now. You know, they're, they're kind of getting there. So uh, yeah, they last really well. I have got more of them to go in. So I'm gonna give these a rinse off, put them to dry. And then later on when I do the um, the bits on the hob um well it's not actually on the hob it's just boiling water so we've got a boiling water tap so that makes it really easy uh, i think it's a pint and a half boiling water over the sugar chuck everything in leave it for 24 hours simple as that i'll put i'll put try and put a link to the recipe if i can in the video so i'm going to crack on get that done brilliant right so we are now going to do this next bit uh, which is going to be making uh, the sugar, which is here, uh, come into uh, boiling water, which I'll get in this. So I need 1.7 litres of boiling water. So what it says to do is pour the water over the sugar. So that's 900 grams of sugar, caster sugar. Uh, I've gone with golden, uh, unrefined. So I pour boiling water over it. That's one litre and 0.7 now. So. Uh... 
a very noisy tap, is this? Ridiculously noisy. 1.7. So that's 1.7 in there, and then we're going to stir that well, and then it says to let it cool. So let me find a spoon. Spoon. Yeah, so I've sliced up the oranges and the lemons here, as you can see, um, they're now nicely sliced. Um, so that's three lemons and two oranges. The other ones are there. Uh, this is the citric acid um, that we're going to need as well. And there are the elderflower um, flowers. Um, so I'll bring them over in a minute. They've been lightly rinsed off with um, nice cool water. I did end up soaking them a bit as you saw and uh, it did make the water smell a bit so I'm not sure if um, I'm just going to put that on there and then it's making that a bit warm. Um, I'm not sure if it is um, taking some of the, the elder flower essence out of them. So that's now fully melted in there. Um, I'll give you a look if you want. Let me get this, see if I can get this to work right. So there we go. That's that's melted in there. And let me get this back in. Sorry about that. In there. Still roughly where it was. Um, yeah, so I now need to let that cool. So I'll be back in a minute. Okay. Once that's cooled, last bit is citric acid in. Just give that a stir and then it kind of goes in. So that's nice and cool now. And then the uh, lemon, orange slices, and then the last thing is the flowers. So this is all going to get strained, so it doesn't matter about any pips or seeds or anything. Now are them. Right, so that's it, last thing, flowers in, which is just gonna be a bit of a squeeze in here. Remember that same from last year. I'm gonna just tip them in. So it does get a bit easier once, once they've all been kind of in for a bit. So we squidge all that in. There we go, that's all in, and then just put lid on, leave it somewhere cool, 24 hours, keep stirring it occasionally, and then filter it through a muslin into some bottles. Good evening, so I have just drained off the uh, elderflower cordial. This is the lovely concoction which is in the middle of it. Uh, so this is just going down to the compost bay now. Um, I drained it through a muslin into a, another pan and then I've decanted it down into a couple of bottles which I will show you probably tomorrow morning because my darling wife's working in the kitchen um, so I don't want to be doing a video in that next to her so uh, yeah this just is going to go ooh, gets a bit dark down here straight into the compost bay hang on ah, hang. just like that get this back out into the daylight well it's not daylight it is currently 20 past 10, so quite light for 20 past 10. Lovely moon up there. Um, yeah, so really impressed at how that's gone. It tastes fantastic. There was a little bit too much to fit into the bottles, so I think I've just got just over three litres off one batch, which is amazing. So um, going to be hopefully trying to do another batch next week. Um, once I've got some more sugar and go pick some more flowers and then uh, I'm gonna have to find a way to freeze that so when I did the elderberry cordial that didn't freeze very well because it wouldn't actually set um, it kind of still stays st syrupy but there's a lot more sugar in that I think than there is in the elderflower cordial so yes as I say really impressed with how it's come out has done absolutely fantastic and amazing to be using something which is so readily available so uh, yeah, you can all have a play with this. How you doing? And that is it. I didn't get a video of me filtering it, but basically filter it through that. I did it in a um, colander into a big pan and then poured the pan through a funnel into the bottle. And that's not it all. Don't worry, there is another three liters. It was three and a bit liters, which came off it. 
absolutely amazing. Tastes fantastic. Store this in the fridge. I am going to try and freeze the next lot and um, just see how that goes. Because um, still got oranges to, to go up there, oranges and lemons. Uh, so I've got enough for another two batches. So at around about three liters-ish, thereabouts, two and a half, three liters, uh, a batch, that's quite a lot. So I am going to look to try and freeze it. And then it does last. The elderberry cordial, which I still have a tiny little bit left of. Yeah, that's, so that's last year's elderberry cordial. Um, that's my last batch, which has come out of the freezer. And that's kept really well. So hopefully I can do something similar with uh, this. But look at that, absolutely amazing color. Dilute it down. You do put it in fairly strong with the water. So, you know, you, oh, it works really good with Indian tonic. Um, Indian tonic water, is that right? Yeah, fizzy water. Or might try it with a soda stream. Um, and then obviously that's just fizzy water. So there's no sugar or anything other than the sugar, which is in this. Um, little kiln the bottles, fantastic. I've got um, some which water came in. And I've got a big version of that as well. Uh, but they're all hiding in the fridge. So yeah, that is about it. So next week, hopefully I'll be back down to doing a bit more normal stuff down at the farm where it's currently absolutely nailing it down today. So lovely bit of water to go onto the stuff which has been sown. So as soon as that comes up, because I did get some sowing done the other day, I'll show you that down there. We'll get it all kind of like getting going, see if the weeder works, because the weeder has arrived. Still a few little teething issues with setting it up. So yeah, we'll see how that goes. So thank you so much for like, subscribe and follow us. This should be just a shorter video. I'm going to go and enjoy a nice glass of this whilst I think about how bad the weather is outside. And uh, yeah, see you later. Take care.